Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're gonna talk about digital comics. We're gonna talk about comicsology, and it's not getting any better. People are very angry about comicsology. It almost seems like Amazon doesn't care. It almost seems like Amazon doesn't have any long-term plans for comicsology, despite uh, talking about you know all these future improvements and future updates. It doesn't really seem like they're they're giving too much of a uh, a poop about comicsology. So we're going to talk about this. This article popped up yesterday on CBR, and uh, I know I had some people send me links talking about the Android version of Comixology being just completely hopeless at this point. You're not even able to buy digital comics through the app anymore, which is kind of kind of the point. I guess you have to buy them on the desktop and then then uh, read them on your on your app, but uh, people not very happy. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about just how important digital comics actually are, because I'll tell you the truth. I really don't know if digital comics are all that important in the grand scheme of things. Uh, it depends on who you ask. Uh, you know, they did over 160 million, I think, in 2020 or 2021. But uh, you know, compared to the rest of the comic book industry, digital is way behind. However. Sites like Webtoon are incredibly popular and, and kind of uh, driving the, uh, the interest in comics, uh, at least for uh, younger people. So let, let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, over, finally, over 270,000 subs. Thank you for the support. Uh, we do talk about comics, making comics ourselves, uh, having worked in comics for a number of years. And we actually do have two crowdfunders I'll just get out of the way. Uh, two crowdfunders coming this summer. Um, one of them is actually a prequel to Shadowbinders. It's been uh, long in development, but it's going to be uh, dropping, I believe, on Kickstarter this summer. And the other one is uh, based on our avatars. Uh, we have a gentleman who is a fan of the comics doing a comic about that. And that one is going to be on Indiegogo. So we're going to do some, some A-B testing. A-B testing and, and see which platform uh, performs. I don't know. I don't know. We're always trying to figure out a better way to do things, uh, unlike Amazon. <laughs> unlike Amazon. Amazon is not looking for a better way to connect people with comics. So this is coming from Comic Book Resources, which, shockingly enough, is actually talking about comic books. Comic Book Resources used to talk almost exclusively about comic books and comic culture, and now Comic Book Resources is just kind of a, a clickbait uh, site. But um, every once in a while, they talk about the comic book industry. So uh, let's see here. Amazon seems determined to completely ruin the comicsology experience. Amazon has done everything it can to put its own unique spin on comicsology's already winning system. Yeah, comicsology worked really well. And every single step has been an utter disaster. And uh, yeah, they purchased Comixology back in 2014. And it seemed like they were really going to let it uh, let it be. Like it didn't really change much. It was like, okay, I'll, the only difference I noticed was there was more integration with Kindle. And, you know, it had the Amazon logo on it, obviously. But it seemed like they were actually going to try to do more Comixology originals. And it was actually going to help the comic book industry. But anytime a major corporation gets involved in comics, it very seldom helps the comic book industry. And it certainly doesn't help independent comic book creators um, at all. So back in September of 2021, Comixology co-founder and then-CEO David Steinberger or Berger released a letter announcing several upcoming updates to the platform. These include a brand new app, as well as the caveat that the existing website users had grown accustomed to would be shuttered after the lengthy integration process between the companies was finalized. At the time, the new app was slated to feature updates on the predecessor's often maligned search and sorting capabilities. Um, once Amazon's version of Comixology went live less than six months later, however, everything that was promised arrived in worse shape than anyone could have possibly imagined. Yeah, people had a hard time finding comics. People had a hard time reading comics. Basically, now they have a hard time buying comics. So the three main reasons you would download a Comixology app is to search for comics and then buy those comics, and then read those comics, and, and they failed on all three. 
Very, very basic shit that uh, independent developers, not Amazon, outside of Amazon can get right. There actually are other comic reading apps out there that have uh, popped up and they were created on shoestring budgets and they work better than Comixology. Um, now it's everything's integrated with, with Comixology. Uh, Greg Pack. Uh, there's no pinch and zoom on the new Comixology Amazon browser reader. No zooming at all. Yeah, because this is fun to read on a tablet or on your phone. Uh, double page spreads show up as single pages with black bars at the top and bottom. So the impact is literally decreased instead of increased. And as mentioned previously, you can't zoom in. Uh, not only was the new reader devoid of every option that had made Comixology great, uh, from panel zooming to two-page view, but the changes made to the platform's search function made it effectively unnavigable. Unnavigable? Is that is that a word? Unnavigable. For anyone with a non-comic library already, Kindle users in particular were stuck with their two separate libraries merging into one with no real way to differentiate between the two when selecting search filters. Uh, Amazon did step up eventually after much complaining and much pressure. And in that short time, they somehow managed to make things worse. March saw Steinberger leave his position as CEO after 15 years. He's out of here. An announcement on Twitter. Uh, Steinberger said that it's been a few big weeks and I have personal news. I've been asked if I'd like to lead a new Amazon-wide initiative that is too good of an opportunity not to take. It was a tough decision, but I'm ready for a new entrepreneurial challenge. I will love comics forever, and I will continue to be an advisor. Well, yeah, people people don't like don't like the direction of it. Uh, comic tropes. If you're curious about the status of Comicsology rolling out improvements to their disastrous update, uh, don't hold your breath. Uh, it's like Comicsology is falling down a flight of stairs, and making sure to hit every single step on the way down. Oh God, yeah. To remain in compliance with updated Google Play Store policies, the option to buy comics, graphic novels, or manga, or subscribe to Comixology Unlimited will no longer be available. And the Comixology app for Android with the re release of version 4.0.1. You can read them, but you can't buy them. <laughs> it's been over three months since Gizmodo published this piece on how much Comixology was destroyed. Things haven't improved. Comixology is useless. One could even argue it's actively gotten worse since they recently ended uh, in-app purchases. Um, let's see. On May 31st, Android users found themselves completely unable to make any in-app purchases. Yeah. So <laughs> what is the fucking purpose of this app? You can't buy comics. You can't search for comics. You can't read comics very well. There is literally no reason for Comixology to exist at this point. Um, Amazon seems determined to undermine everything Comixology was beloved for prior to the merger. Fans have turned to Humble Bundle and other platforms to fill the gaps. Uh, Global Comics has stepped up to try and take the space over from Comixology. Uh, doesn't look like Amazon is interested in biting back in any meaningful way. I don't think Amazon cares about Comixology. I think it was a thing they bought because, you know, back... Five, six years ago when the money was uh, flowing freely and before Amazon was having, you know, its its problems, you know, like everybody else is having problems right now, tech companies especially, uh, they were just buying things just to say they had more things. And I think Comixology was a curiosity that they bought because they felt like they should be in the digital comic space because, you know, again, we've got Webtoon, um, you know, and they're getting all kinds of movie deals and stuff now and Webtoon is doing very, very good. But Webtoon does one thing. It publishes you know, digital comics. Um, and that's the one thing they do well. Amazon tries to do everything well-ish, or at least tried to. And yeah, Comixology just doesn't seem like it's a very good fit, does it? It almost feels like they're uh, deprecating the technology. Um, I have to wonder how long it'll be until they just retire it. I know other publishers, Marvel and DC, I guess they had their own comics apps or something. I don't read them. I don't care. I used to, I used to buy the Marvel comics on CD-ROM. Remember CD-ROMs? Yeah, it was great. I thought it was great. Like every issue of Spider-Man on one disc. And, um, yeah, I, I love that. But, uh, yeah, this is a problem. I mean, people are spending... Tons and tons of money on digital comics, and uh, Amazon could just decide tomorrow that they don't want to do it anymore. 
I don't think there's anything you can really do about it. I mean, if they decide, hey, we're not going to do digital comics anymore, we're shutting down Comixology. If you've spent, you know, $10,000 in digital comics, which is incredibly stupid, by the way, don't do that. But let's just say that you have over the past, you know, 10 years, um, you know, purchased $10,000 worth of digital comics. Do you no longer have access to them? I'm sure it's in the fine print somewhere in the user agreement that you're effectively renting or leasing the comics. So you have to think about that. Now, I know that uh, some independent comic book creators were complaining that Amazon is not very friendly toward indie creators anymore with uh, Submit. I guess Submit's gone now. I don't I don't really know. But lots of problems with uh, Comixology. I mean, geez, even The Verge is covering it. The merging of Comixology and Kindle has created a hell I'd like to escape. <laughs> I'd like to escape this hell. Now, I'm trying to figure out exactly how much digital comics are worth to the comic book industry. And according to 2020, and this is when people are in lockdown, so they're, they're probably buying more digital comics than they, they normally would, digital comic downloads were about $160 million. I imagine the most, most of that revenue comes from Comixology. So even if Let's just say, you know, 120 million of that was Comixology. And then you've got, you know, the Shonen Jump app. And of course, they're including all those things. Shonen Jump and Webtoon and Tapas and wherever else you buy your comics, right? So let's say 100 million of that is all money in Amazon's pockets. That's nothing to Amazon. <laughs> like, it is nothing to Amazon. $100 million to Amazon is, is not much. And I really have to wonder if they're just looking at this like, yeah, it's really not worth it. A book is a book. They can do Kindle. You know, they can just do Kindle. We don't need a dedicated comic book reading app. It doesn't generate enough money. We're making way more money off of uh, traditional, you know, prose text, uh, Amazon books. I mean, there are people out there doing porn and doing you know slash and uh bootleg minecraft books which apparently that's this whole sub genre bootleg minecraft books and they're making way more money on kindle and they're making way more money for kindle than they're going to make off of of comic books you know most people who buy comics or manga or whatever they, they they do tend to buy physical copies so uh, i don't know guys i really get the vibe that they're just not not interested in Comixology. If they were, they would fix it. If they were, they would have put more into it. Uh, it just feels like this is kind of a, a Band-Aid, uh, kind of a stopgap, like they knew they couldn't just, you know, flip a switch and completely erase the Comixology branding, but they're they're going to try to push you over to Kindle. And then, like I said, you know, a book is a book. I don't think they give a shit. I really don't. I think it's, um, again, this is a thing they bought. They don't really care. They're Amazon, and now they're they're hitting some choppy water, and uh, you know things are going to give. And if comics aren't that profitable for them, they're not going to put a lot into it. So, uh, yeah, find another option <laughs> because somebody else will focus uh, solely on comics and and do it well. And I'm sure there are lots of people out there that 100 million dollars to them would be fantastic. It would be the the best thing ever. So let's let's hope that uh, somebody else steps up. I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.